It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Well, there's another type that we think you ought to be aware of, and this is what we just kind of call this the shyster category. And these are the folks who convince you to do something, but perhaps that thing that they're convincing you to do is not quite as good as the brochure might suggest. Yeah, we started this one off with dumb doctor deals, Mm -hmm. and I know that is so... It's not a nice thing well, to call Why don't people. you talk about the etymology of that? Why have we yeah. dubbed it dumb doctor deals? Well, I mean, I worked at a firm previously when we did a lot of private placements. And look, uh, private placements aren't all bad. It's it's kind of like in the previous section I had to give the disclosure. My father was a salesman, mm-hmm. so not all salesmen are out there crooking on you. But it is one of those things that there are people who have created an entire industry of trying to convince you to work against yourself by buying more complexity than you need. They tell it, they market it in a way. This is why we call it dumb doctor deals, because we know doctors make great incomes. Mm-hmm. Now, look, they might have a lot of debt too, but they have great incomes. So it's not uncommon that they come into this income stream. They're not super sophisticated from a financial standpoint. And somebody gets a hold of them and says, hey, you want to know what rich people do? You want to know what's sexy, has a ton of sizzle? This is everybody who's making the type of money you make buys this. And then just off of that that sizzle and the sexiness and the way it's marketed, they buy this thing without understanding really what you're getting mm-hmm. into. And the reason these deals have a lot of, you know, you, you got to put skull and crossbones or put that Surgeon General's warning on them just like they do cigarettes is because the government doesn't give you the protection. They Mm -hmm. assume somebody who has this level of assets, this level of income, is a sophisticated individual, so you can go get ripped off to your heart's content (laughs) because you have enough assets and enough income that you should know better. So that makes it right for somebody to come in there. Mm -hmm. Now, I do want to make sure we know, because I can hear Charles is probably out there who does a lot of real estate syndicates and other things. There are, and I've done private placements that have done really well for clients because there is just like you can have benefits with mutual funds where they bring assets together and you can buy in bulk much better than you can buy an individual. Mm -hmm. You can also cut the cost of due diligence and all these things. There's a place for private deals. I'm not, I'm not taking away from that, but there's an entire industry that has now turned it into what's good. And they've taken it to a level where it's more about sales, Mm -hmm. more about enriching the people who put together these products than enriching the people who actually invest. Invest in it. Yeah, so you said, Brian, you have to be, you know, the special types of folks that can even do this. You have to be an accredited investor, which means you either have certain asset levels or certain income. And you mentioned that it's not regulated in the same way that other types of investments are regulated. Well, one of the other big problems with private placements, like when you actually look at them and break them down, is they're pretty expensive from a fee standpoint. It's not incredibly uncommon to see something where you go into some sort of private deal and there might be an annual management fee. And these things can be big. It could be 2% a year that you're paying the manager of the deal. And then on top of that, you're also paying performance performance-based fees. Perhaps it's 20% of any of the performance or 20% over a certain watermark. In our estimation, we've, you know, we help clients kind of sort through these deals and figure out, does it make sense? Does it not make sense? Oftentimes, when you look at the performance you can garner from just a simple index fund relative to the after fee performance of what you're getting in some of these private placements that are illiquid, complicated, that complicate your tax situation, you start to say, man, was that really worth it? Did I really right. come out better because of that? So... We're not saying that they're all bad, but we are saying they are often sold as much better than they are in re- reality. Yeah, I would know what you're getting into. You know, we uh, we give so much guidance on understanding your why or begin with the end in mind. It's because I think a lot of people get sold these things and they find out, oh, we, since we have a K-1 that's going to be generated, our taxes are going to always be extended. Yep. I mean, these are things that go in, but here here's some 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 kind of due diligence you ought to consider. When you're talking, you get the placement document. I want you to try to read through this thing. Don't don't glaze over or gloss over it. I want you to get into the numbers and the weeds to figure out and run a scenario both if it does well versus also what happens when it doesn't do well. And then say, how much is going to flow through to the investors? Mm -hmm. 
how much is going to flow through to the managing group that's putting this deal together. So that's one thing, because you might find they get rich either way. Mm -hmm. That's a concern, because you want them on the same side of the table as you, so you want a lot of incentive for you to be rewarded as an investor, not just a way to enrich the managing or organizing group. Also, figure out, pay attention to those fees that Mm -hmm. Bo just described. You know, make sure they are industry standard or somewhat reasonable. And then here's something I always like to do to kind of separate the the fluff from the reality. Ask that general partner, ask that management group or organization group, how much of their own personal assets are in this deal? How much are their parents, relatives, Mm -hmm. friends? They should be able to, to, to talk to that in a way so you can know, is this something that they've packaged to enrich them, or is this something they've actually put their money in? Skin the game. Uh, because you want to make sure that they're worried about mama losing her money just as much as you're losing your money, mm-hmm. and that's going to help you really kind of cut through what's going on here. 